America has no culture. It's a phrase you've probably heard before and maybe even said yourself, and it's an absolute falsehood. If you've ever worn a baseball cap, enjoyed a nice view from a skyscraper, or used about 90% of the apps that are likely on your mobile device, you've encountered American culture. Vast cities, entrepreneurial ambition, and rugged frontiers have defined what it means to be an American for centuries. But there's a recent entrant to that lineup that, while often underrepresented, is just as much a defining aspect of American and perhaps even human culture as anything else. Aerospace. That's right, aerospace. Imagine it however you want, everything from muscular fighter jet displays to pioneering rocket launches. If it has a loud engine and carries explosive capability, be it destructive or controlled, there's a good chance you've probably imagined an American flag flying in there somewhere. And that's what I want to talk about in today's video, how aerospace, or at minimum the space aspect of it, an individual industry that doesn't affect most people's lives on a noticeable basis, has undeniably shaped not only what it means to be an American, but perhaps even human. How our intrinsic need to explore and innovate defines what may be the most impactful technologies of the 21st century, and how that same rugged frontiersmanship culture may shape the future that awaits humanity among the stars. But before we get into any of that, if you're hungry to keep up with all the latest developments in the new space industry, from where the money is flowing to the latest news, don't hesitate to subscribe to my free space industry newsletter, Launchpad, landing in your inbox once per week. Now, back to business. When I was in high school, I remember another student specifically mentioning that he didn't think America had any culture. And everyone at the lunch table ripped into him. Baseball, apple pie, smartphones, they all said. And I recall being the only one to offer up the moon landing as an option. The other student looked at me and said, that's not culture, it's an achievement. To which I replied, What's the difference? Culture is defined by what a group of people value and believe to be important. What aspects of a society float to the top of all the things to complain about that its members can generally agree to be a good thing. Throughout history, this has manifested in uncountable ways, some more fondly remembered than others. Yet all of the aspects of American culture I could have pulled from to counter that other student why pick the moon landing? At the time, it just felt right. After all, it's spoken of often in the same breath as humanity's greatest achievements, and that first American flag still rests on the lunar surface. How could it not come to mind? Past the remarkable achievement of landing a man on the moon at all costs with 1960s technology, the ultimate driving force behind this achievement is rooted in an aspect of American culture that has been around for far longer. American exceptionalism. The belief that Americans, by way of our diverse heritages working toward a singular goal, or perhaps by some God-given right in the eyes of some, possess the conate ability to do the impossible, to cross the Atlantic to start a new life, to traverse a vast and inhospitable frontier in search of brighter futures, put a man on the moon because no one else had. American exceptionalism has manifested itself in a number of different ways over the years. From desiring simple freedoms from the British crown that ultimately led to the formation of the country, to the impulse of beating the Soviet Union in the space race for the sake of proving that our socioeconomic system was superior. But everything circles back to that culture of proving oneself above all others, to make your own fate for better or worse. It was only natural that the rugged frontiers of the American westward expansion and cultural character frontiersmanship would carry on into the final frontier, space. In the 1960s, America's Cold War with the Soviet Union was entering a new front, beyond the atmosphere, where new rules could be drawn and new achievements could be made. This same aerospace culture, often heavily influenced by the military, was present in the contemporary Soviet Union as well. Old space propaganda reinforces this idea, and their list of achievements speak for themselves. Launching the first satellite, first man, first woman, first animal, first probes to the moon, Venus, and Mars, and first space station. America accomplished similar achievements on a comparable time frame, but often fell short to the Soviet Union on most of them, up until that fateful day when Apollo 11 first landed on the moon. From there, despite budget cuts, program changes, and the eventual collapse of the Soviet Union, things only got more interesting. Space Shuttle was developed as the first partially reusable rocket, and became an icon of American power for nearly 40 years. Chances are you've still got a handheld toy of one buried in an attic somewhere. The International Space Station, spearheaded by America and Russia, embodied the idea that space could be a place where old rivalries could be put aside for a greater cause. And now the modern space sector, with players like SpaceX and Blue Origin, innovate in ways that NASA, as a government agency with a limited budget, cannot. Personifying the American philosophy that free enterprise, when working with government support, can accomplish great things. 
In the 1860s, the American Transcontinental Railroad connecting east to west was funded and supported by the United States government at the federal level, and supported with contracts from the private sector for everything from food and clothing resupplies to tools and raw materials. Corporate innovation backed by government oversight. And now the cycle repeats itself with the new space economy. The commercial sector makes the tip of the spear in not just the American aerospace industry, but the worldwide one as well. SpaceX alone has launched nearly 90% of all mass into Earth orbit in 2023, and that figure may jump to 99% once the ultra-heavy lift Starship rocket is fully operational. The rest of the world combined makes a scant comparison to the achievements of a single American company backed by the strategic interests of the U.S. government in the form of NASA. These developments aren't exclusive wins for the American aerospace industry, they help everyone on Earth, after all. Though especially Americans, of course, who enjoy an unbeatable deal with the value of their tax revenue going to support innovations that are orders of magnitude more efficient than even a mere 10 years ago. And that is an important point to note, that being a superpower in the 21st century requires being a spacefaring power as well. Not just for scientific opportunity and cutting-edge research, but for military, communications, and security applications that cannot be replicated on the ground. Courtesy of SpaceX, the cheapest access to space in the world has come with its benefits for the government and civilians alike. Satellite constellations for secure defense and public communications, access to public domain scientific research at the cutting edge of space exploration, and widely available public grants and private investment to commercialize your own space-based projects. Controlling easy access to space means having the power of a scarcely tapped domain at your fingertips. And this power has helped define America and perhaps humanity's long-term cultural and societal aspirations more than anything else. No one can deny that colonizing the solar system is an inspiring thought, but America is one of the few countries that seems to take it seriously. NASA has spearheaded the Artemis Accords, an agreement between 41 countries and counting to safely and sustainably explore the moon and beyond. And with its commercial sector thriving with goals of its own like SpaceX's Mars-based vision, the future is looking bright. And those countries that first expand into space will be the ones that set the rules for it. While scientific exploration is a major goal, overlooking the geopolitical motivations loses the bigger picture and America, and humans in general, have always been inclined to seek greater territory and resources to achieve our goals. Space will be no different, both for geopolitical and scientific gain, and this line of thinking has manifested itself deeply into American culture. And that is a key takeaway, I believe, a lesson for us all that can be learned from those who are actively a part of these fields that, by their very nature, are forward-looking, that possess a conate ability and mission to create a better world. Biotechnology, space, renewable energy, what do they all have in common? They wouldn't exist if the people in these fields didn't believe that the world could be better. That technology, in the right hands, can save lives, enhance our understanding of the universe, and protect our planet. And those personalities that capture that hope can yield massive success. It's why Elon Musk has gained such tremendous popularity, or a cult of personality depending on who you ask. Because they inspire people. Because I believe, deep down, that people want to be inspired. They want to believe that the world has hope. And that has been a defining aspect of not just American culture, but human nature as a whole. And a defining motivation for space exploration as well. Hope for a better world, brighter futures, and bolder technology. And I believe that that's a culture we can be inspired by, even if it is sometimes buried behind a simple love for controlled explosions.